Hey guys, in this video I wanted to introduce you with a genomic and biotech stock that I personally own and it's CRISPR Therapeutics, ticker symbol CRSP and they develop medicines based on CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing technology for different serious illnesses such as beta thalassemia, sickle cell disease, type 1 diabetes, etc. Now these are all chronic genetic diseases and typically stays with the patient for their entire life. And what CRISPR is trying to do is uh, they're trying to edit the genome to treat these diseases permanently. So in a way they're trying to achieve a lifelong cure uh, for these patients. So that's amazing news for mankind if successful. Um, now keep in mind this is still an early stage biotech company so that means they still don't have any FDA approved drugs yet as of this video. Now the first time I heard about this uh, gene editing technology that is CRISPR-Cas9 was in 2020 and back then Cathy Wood was hyping the biotech and genomic sector quite a lot comparing this sector to Tesla and so on and so forth and as a result the stock price went up to as high as $200 at some point implying a total market cap of about $16 billion for this company CRISPR Therapeutics. Now you can imagine for our early stage biotech company with zero revenue and no drugs approved by the FDA yet, $16 billion is quite a lot of money to pay. So and that's why the stock is crashing back to some reasonable valuation in recent time. So as of this video it's currently trading at about $62 and down almost 65% from its all time high. So that's why I think it's trading currently at a reasonable valuation. The current market cap as of this video is $4.7 billion. Um, that's somewhat discounted from its earlier valuation of $16 billion. And they also have $2.5 billion in cash and cash equivalents on their balance sheet. So I think this valuation, considering that they have tremendous cash balance on their balance sheet, is attractive in the long term. So in this video, I'll share some information uh, to explain why I like the stock at this level and why you might be interested to do some additional research in this space, which is CRISPR-Cas9 based companies. And at the end of the video, I'll share my CRISPR-Cas9 portfolio. And for full disclosure, I have a small position in several Cas9 based stocks. Again, this is not a financial advice. I'll just share some information which I think you'll like. Alright, so if you look at their pipeline, you will see that there are several therapies in clinical trial. So that means they already enrolled patients to verify the safety and efficacy of these therapies. Now CTX001 is their most anticipated therapy. This will be used to treat beta thalassemia and sickle cell disease. The reason this therapy is so promising is they already published some data from their recent clinical trial and those results look really promising. So for example, they treated 15 thalassemia patients who became transfusion independent after the therapy. So that means those patients don't need any sort of lifelong blood transfusion anymore. So this is really exciting. They also treated seven uh, sickle cell disease patients and they all became free from vasoocclusive crisis. Again, meaning those patients don't need any sort of lifelong transfusion anymore. So these are some really great medical revolution and these would not have been possible without the Cas9 technology of gene editing. So anyway, they're working with the Vartex Pharmaceuticals for the development of CTX001 and Vartex in their recent conference call released some additional data. So they basically enrolled more patients in the trial. So more than 70 patients as you can see here and they're planning for FDA approval by the end of 2022. So that's great to see for CTX001. Now I like their relationship with Vartex um, because Vartex is providing them with a lot of money needed for the development of this drug. So far Vartex paid more than a billion dollars for CTX001 development and according to their agreement Vartex will pay 60% of their total cost for developing this drug and CRISPR will pay the remaining 40% and they will also you know split the profit at a 60-40 ratio as well. Now that gives me additional confidence seeing that a major biotech company backing them up with billions of dollars. If Vartex didn't have enough conviction, they wouldn't pay, it, uh, they wouldn't pay so much money uh, to CRISPR therapeutics for the drug development. 
As you see here, their chairman said that our increased investment in our partnership with CRISPR is based on the compelling clinical profile of CDX001, which shows its potential to be a durable cure for patients with sickle cell disease and transfusion-dependent thalassemia. So that's great news for CRISPR investors. And even from their own conference call, you see that they're planning for FDA approval at the end of 2022. So that's a great catalyst for CTX001 and for CRISPR therapeutics. All right, so let's now take a look at their balance sheet and you will see they have about $2.4 billion in cash and cash equivalents on their balance sheet. And their total liabilities are sitting at $308 million. So basically they have a net cash position of $2 billion on their balance sheet. Uh, and if you look at their operational expense, they spent $382 million in the last nine months. So that's about $500 million in operational expense yearly. So basically with $2 billion in cash on their balance sheet, they can run their business for another four years without diluting the shareholders significantly. So that's very good to see. Let's now explore the market size for CTX001. Now this slide is taken from the most recent conference call from Vartex. And you see approximately 150,000 people in the US and Europe are suffering from sickle cell disease. And for beta thalassemia, that's 16,000 people. Now out of all those people, they estimate that about 32,000 people uh, will suffer from serious conditions and they will opt out for gene editing therapy. So they will need some sort of gene editing therapy. So I'll do the estimation based on these 32,000 people. And keep in mind, there are patients in other parts of the world like uh, Japan, Australia, India, and so on and so forth. But we'll exclude that for now. So if you take that 32,000 people and multiply that by $2 million per dose or per treatment, that's a $64 billion market for CTX001. Now let's assume CTX001 can capture 50% of that market because there are competition from other Cas9 based companies like Intellia Therapeutics, Beam Therapeutics, etc. So that's still a $32 billion market for CTX001. Now, according to their agreement with Vartex, they will capture 40% of that market. So that's about $12 billion for uh, CRISPR therapeutics, just from one single drug, which is CTX001. Now, if you compare that with their current market cap of $4.5 billion and their cash position of $2.1 billion, you see that they might be a acquisition target for big pharmas as well at this point. So that's something to keep in mind that might happen but at this point it's just in speculation now looking at some of their other drugs other than ctx001 you see that they recently started human trial for type 1 diabetes and this is pretty exciting news if it's successful it will be a blessing for mankind as you see here almost 1.6 million americans living with type 1 diabetes in the u.s alone and this is a chronic disease that stays with the patient for their entire life and they need to do like uh, in, use insulin for their whole life and worldwide this number uh, type 1 diabetic patients are actually higher much higher than 1.6 million so that's great and they also have some immuno oncology drugs immuno oncology therapy so we'll have to wait and see how those drugs and therapies play out but as of now CTX001 is their most promising drug and very close to FDA filing. All right, so let's now talk about some of the risks. So before we move on to the risk, please consider subscribing to the channel. I regularly post videos on stock ideas and I intend to do so going forward. So if you like the video, consider liking and subscribing to the channel and that will be a great support for my channel and I really appreciate that. Okay, so first, the biggest risk in this space I see is from the competitions, right? So there are several key players in the CRISPR-Cas9 based uh, technology. So for example, Intellia Therapeutics, Beam Therapeutics, and Editas Medicine. They all are doing great research and great work in this space. So for example, Intellia recently did a genome editing inside the human body. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, for context, CTX001 by CRISPR and Vartex, what they do, they actually edit the genome outside the human body and then reinsert the cell inside the human body. So seeing that Intellia is doing 
all this thing, the gene, genome editing process inside the human body is pretty exciting. Then we have beam, uh, beam therapeutics, which work based on uh, base editing, which is a different version of the CRISPR-Cas9. And they are already making billions of dollars partnership with big pharmaceutical companies like Pfizer uh, and so on and so forth. So that's pretty exciting. So overall, it's an exciting space for human um, mankind going forward. But which company will be successful in the long run, that needs to be seen. So for my own perspective, I think there will be multiple players in the space. And I think CRISPR, CRISPR therapeutics will be one of those uh, multiple players. Now, the other risk is anything can go wrong during the clinical trial and the patient uh, can even die from uh, trial and that might hurt the share of price going forward. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So these are some of the risks you need to know before you invest in this stock. Um, so just keep that, keep this risk in mind. All right, so looking at the recommendation from the analyst, from six analysts, we have one strong buy, two buy rating and three whole rating. In terms of price, uh, average analyst price target is $150 from 20 analysts and the stock is currently trading at about $62. So that means there is, you know, more than 100% upside uh, in the stock as of this uh, video from the analyst price target. Now, for my personal position, I have 1.8% of my entire portfolio in CRSP stock, 0.6% uh, in BIM, BIM Therapeutics, and I do not have any position in Intelia Therapeutics as of this video, but I strongly intend to make a small position in Intelia as well. And since this entire sector is very speculative and very risky, I will not make this uh, more not more than five percent of my entire portfolio so combined all the genomic stocks will be less than five percent of my entire portfolio so that's what i am planning to do going forward um, so i hope you got some value out of this video if you did consider liking and subscribing and i'll see you guys on the next video good luck with your investment